Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 824. Yeah, 824. I'm still like grokking that one for a second. Um, the topic today is actually from a meme I posted today, so this is going to be a follow up. And I've edited it slightly just so you know. So the title is officially Don't Look for a Partner Who Is Just Eye Candy. Look and in parentheses feel for someone who's also soul food. It's actually a quote by um, Karen Salmon's song, I think. Salmon's is a name. Anyway, before I jump to explain what I mean, and you probably figured out what I mean anyway, and explain how you can do that, let me, let me introduce myself first and give you all the details about what this is about so you know why you might want to stick around and watch the broadcast. Um, this is a Facebook Live, by the way. So if you're watching on YouTube, it's a replay, and I'll give you information about that at the back end as well. So before I jump in, my introduction to who I am, so you know why you might want to listen <laughs> or watch or interact or any of that stuff. My, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already figure that out. That's Summer Ends Broadcast is my name. I am an inspirational speaker, a love and relationships expert, and a best-selling author, or the author of the best-selling book, if that's the wrong way around, of 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, about relationships, love, and all sorts of good stuff like that. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is why I'm so passionate about helping women find balance in love, life, and business, and also informs my work, and also these talks I've done now for over two years, two and a half years, excuse me, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode 824, and the topic today is about choosing somebody who's not just eye candy, but is also soul food. And I did play with the quote a little bit, and I said, the actual quote itself is, um, don't just don't um, don't look for a partner who's eye candy. Look for someone. Look for a partner who is soul food, or, or partner. Yes, partner is soul food. I tweeted a little bit because some feedback I received on the on the meme, and also because I think it's different. Is because first of all, I said don't look for someone who is just eye candy. Because the thing is, it's okay to like find someone attractive. Let's be clear. It's nice to be around someone who's attractive. It's hard actually to fall in love with. Sorry, excuse me. It's hard enough to fall in love with somebody who doesn't attract you on some level. So attraction is a key factor. But the thing about it is the eye candy level, meaning they're just stimulating your visual cortex kind of sort of thing, isn't enough. And I also said about how um, I said look and in parentheses feel for someone who's soul food because we're often attracted by what we see versus what we feel. And those are two different things. And I want to speak to that a little bit more in detail because some recent conversations with some um, friends, um, compadres, and clients, because it's a blend, about the challenges they face when they going into a relationship where it got toxic. And I want to speak to that a little bit because that's important to know. Because the thing is, it's like when you really are tuned in to trusting yourself and trusting somebody else, hey, Diane, nice to see my broadcast live. Thank you for the tag. Yes. Well, I hope the tagline is going to speak to this. Is, again, this is a meme I posted today that this is actually a explanation, explanation about. So this this is, can probably speak predominantly to men, but women are the same way as well to a large degree. Men are very much attracted visually by what they see. That's one of the challenges that the dating arena is about for everybody is that some people don't register on the highest levels of the visual scale, that's an interesting way of putting it, for men or women who are attracted visually. But the thing is, that's one of the challenges, that some people are so caught up in looking perfect, they don't do anything on the internal levels. And that's one of the drawbacks of being so caught up in the visual world and being in LA. There's a lot of that about, perhaps more than other places. And so the quality of relationships that people are looking for are oftentimes more two-dimensional almost, because it's so much on the presentation and not on the content. I can feel some quotes coming on already from already things um, that make it challenging to have healthy relationships because the visual appeal, the visual appearance does wear off. At least maybe it does for me, maybe it doesn't for you, but I th for me it definitely does. And if you're going to be with somebody long term, the visual appearance is going to change just the way it's going to be. It doesn't matter how, how much plastic surgery you go through or how much makeup you wear, you're going to find over decades that your appearance will change. Life does that, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. So, speaking about the soul food level, finding someone you can really enjoy being with is part of the conversation, but also having your radar out, having your awareness tuned and honed to feel into where somebody really is. Because, as I was talking to somebody um, 
yesterday, two different conversations yesterday about choosing badly and not choosing intentionally badly, but choosing in choosing and then in hindsight discovering how badly they chose is a painful experience. It's something that basically for many people makes it very hard to be in healthy relationships. So hi Shauna. Sorry saying here, just you can quote you think I think you should really enjoy connecting with a local Asheville friend of yours, Sarah Poet. Her professional focus is also on the divine masculine and feminine. I will I will check out afterwards. So thank you for that connection. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, Shauna. Um, and I'll check it once I get off the broadcast because I got I got more to talk about. <laughs> but thank you for that. So the dance we have in relationships and dating, the dating scene in particular, is we tend to have a criteria we think we're looking for when we're meeting, meeting somebody, and oftentimes it is tied to a visual appearance. And I'm thinking all these different analogies I can present. Like um, there are some. Well, let me let me throw this one out there just to be as I'm a car nut. <laughs> um, Mercedes Benz happens to be a car brand I happen to like a lot. However, their appearance sometimes is amazing, but mechanically they've got some serious flaws in the last ten years or so. And so it's a car I wouldn't buy. Doesn't matter how attractive it is, I wouldn't buy it because I know that down the road the mechanics and it cost me massively because of this flaws in the engine design. Humans aren't much different. <laughs> Many humans are perceiving themselves in the mirrors how they look versus what's going on internally. And I mean that more in terms of consciousness. But also, there are many of us who are looking, and I caught myself in that camp too, I've done it myself, I caught up looking at somebody by how they appear visually to us when we see them, whether it's in pictures or in videos or in like real life. And we don't spend any time getting to know that person, to know what they're internal or their it's more than personality that their way of being is and this is the thing is that a lot of people tend to commit themselves to a relationship just on visual data alone without having any exploration or understanding of the person's what the person's about what they're like what their beliefs are etc etc so on the on the top level of the soul food level so to speak it's important to get to know somebody beyond their appearance because you might find out that you, one of you is a right-wing supporter, one of you is a left-wing supporter, or one of you is a vegan and one of you is a carnivore. These different things that can, can, can work but also can be challenging in relationships. So that's the surface level. But when you go deeper and start discovering your own patterns and programming, that's when things get interesting. And that's not good interesting, by the way. In the, in the course of the last um, 150 talks at least, I've definitely touched in this area about your childhood patterns, which shows up as well. And there's going to be cases where you'll meet somebody who you're attracted to, and it might be something where you just go, I don't know why, but I'm very attracted to this person. Well, the reason why it oftentimes is because on a level below your awareness, uh, below your consciousness, is a um, radar-seeking missile of attraction. Yeah, it sounds pretty intense. Where you're seeking out patterns that match yours so you can actually work through stuff from your childhood. And I did a whole talk about this recently about the childhood programming. Actually, I've done several talks about it because it's so v important. And if you don't deal with this, it's going to get in the way of every relationship. But what's happening is this, this pattern-seeking missile, <laughs> as I've coined the term, is a part of your consciousness that basically is repeating the programming you took on when you were very young. And so it's seeking relationships that will exacerbate, repeat, and remind you of those, but not right initially. So the thing is, you'll meet somebody you're very attracted to and won't know why, but then after you've been with them for a few months or a few years, maybe you were married, maybe you're not, you'll start to notice, and maybe not initially, but over a period of time, you'll start to notice a, a familiar experience in a relationship, a familiar pattern, a familiar behavior, a familiar experience, a familiar response that you'll have with your partner that you had no clue about before. Again, you're attracted to how they looked, something about them got your attention, but what we didn't know was there's something below the surface that was pulling you in like an exact, like a rope, like a, an anchor pulling you into, into, uh, um, into that relationship. And then with that person, you discover a period of time on the road that their patterns they're bringing forward, their way of treating you or the way of not treating you is resonant with how you used to feel when you were a kid or how you saw your parents interact when you were a kid. That's the whole, uh, that's the whole package of the pieces. And if you don't deal with this stuff from your childhood, it'll keep happening and you won't get what you want. So that's one piece I put on the side over there. The other piece I'm talking about is failing to do your 
simply put, your due diligence when you're dating. Yes, there's due diligence when dating. That's a whole other tagline. Which is when you meet somebody, you go out with them. Be somewhat cautious. And I mean the sense of sometimes it's like you're so excited, so exuberant, so caught up in the chemistry, you'll have sex the first night. That's an option. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. It's a choice. But bear in mind, sex is a, on some one level, is a chemical bonding experience. That sounds fancy, doesn't it? What it means is you become attached to the other person, energetically, and also chemically. You'll, feel, you'll have certain hormones released that will make you feel more close to that person. When it happens the first night or the first week you've been together and you don't know who they really are, you start getting invested in a relationship which may not be the rest one for you. Again, finding someone who is soul food and feeling into that is to knowing what that person is really about, what their, their being is about, their calling, their desire. So, electric, electric car, an interesting name. You agree and you're a complete organic gourmet meal with dessert, although you do still look like eye candy on the surface, which the ones willing to dive deep, look past surface stereotypes, find out. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. But the thing about this is, it, and that's an interesting analogy, you gave me a whole picture there, which was great, thank you, is the recognition is that when we're in the dating process, the experience, is it's often time, it's often distracting, it often, um, what's the word looking for, there's a word, what's the word looking for? Um, I say it's like a trap, but there's another word looking for. It's 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 not just <laughs> it's not just the fact that it is distra it's it's distracting. It's also um, hypnotizing. This word hypnotizing. That's a better word. You're getting hypnotized in somebody's way of being because of the way they present themselves. And the truth is, when you find out who they really are, it's like in those um, like animated cartoons where the person presents a great image, but then when they took off their mask, they're this evil villain type character and it might not it's not necessarily like that but it is about meeting somebody to know who they really are to discover if those patterns they're running will be detrimental to your beingness your well-being so that's another piece too and some of that does tie in to this child of patterns i mentioned so two things i want to speak to one of those is that origin that challenge you fall into that trap you fall into that exploration where you have more discovery with the person you're meeting gives you a chance to really get clear if you want to jump in or not. My my recommendation is is don't jump too quickly. Get to know that person, get to make friends with them. Um, a recent broadcast story in another group I was part of talks about how it's important that you become friends because first of all, it's nice to know who the person is before you really commit to them. And secondly, if the relationship doesn't work out, you may stay friends afterwards. That's of course if you don't go through some traumatic thing with them in the middle. Getting back to this piece over here that I left. This is probably the biggest piece of the work I do in, and it's something that most people don't do, so I want to make sure you get to hear this. Because a lot of the, t the wiring we have, the, the um, um, attraction we have into a relationship isn't based upon the visual appearance. It isn't the eye candy that pulls you in. It's actually the um, dysfunctional, I'm trying to think of another term to describe this. It's in a way it's like it's the dysfunctional patterns, is the best way to put it, where basically it's not soul food, it's karmic crap no <laughs> I don't have the right words to describe it but the truth is it's these things where you get drawn into a relationship with somebody but you don't find it till later on that you're actually repeating experiences you memorize from when you were a child and this is the biggest ignored piece that most people don't even think about in relationships when you go out with somebody and you meet them and you discover two years down the road that they're giving you the same story the same experience same patterns that you've had before in past relationships and that you think when you think about far enough you go for if you're a woman specifically may you always go that reminds me of my dad it might remind you of your mother too because they're both in there as adults we are walking talking repeating pattern repeating um, expresses of the patterns we learned when we were kids does that land i hope that makes sense because this is one of the things we don't talk about is that we learn at the needs of our parents the things that they don't teach us by talking to us, they teach us by expressing to us, by sharing how they are, by demonstrating in front of us how they behave. And if you raise them with a parent, either one, that's carrying around these patterns, you're going to end up repeating the cycle in relationships. Hi, Karen Eden, I see you in my broadcast. And so if you don't do the work to go through and cleanse out that old pattern, it's going to keep repeating itself again and again in your adult life. 
I talked to this before in the broadcast a few days ago for myself, where I was in a place where my dating life was um, punctuated, <laughs> as we're putting it, by meeting I meet attractive women, definitely eye candy when I was younger. Well, actually, let me say this. That's another topic. Okay, I'll say that for, for later. But I was meeting women who was attracted to me, get into a relationship, but they'd always end with an argument. As in, an argument happened, they'd end and I'd leave. And I would break the relationship off every single time. It's happened several times in because they were very brief relationships, literally two or three months in my late teens, early twenties. But I didn't know why. At, I, I'm just trying to think how far ahead it was. It was several, several years later afterwards that I looked back and started going, "Okay, so what was happening? What was really going on?" When I finally started digging deep, I realized that I had a memory I was carrying around without being conscious of it, except when I was very young. That I don't remember my parents ever arguing, and I had basically created this program, this this recording, this this wiring belief that love doesn't include arguments because my parents didn't argue and they definitely loved each other. So my belief was that if there was an argument, actually what it was was love is love. There was no room in that arena for an argument because I didn't know what it was. I didn't have experience of one, not when in a loving relationship. Fast forward to my adult life, as I mentioned, I would always leave after an argument because when an argument happened, I turned off the loving because I didn't know at that time, that loving could include arguments because the rules I grew up with didn't include that. Now, that's my example. Every one of us has an example of something we learned when we were kids, three, four, five years old, that imprinted us with a belief about something tied to our loving experience. So as an adult, we will start repeating that cycle until we dis disconnect and rewire the loving to be free of that. So the thing is, when you start to really get to see what it is you're running as your automatic programming, that's when you can make choices that go beyond that. You can choose a really powerful relationship that goes much deeper. However, you've got to be willing to face that yourself. Best time to do that is when you're single because when you're in a relationship, you might often be repeating the same patterns. But if you do look at it when you're single, it's the best time to go through deeper and to disconnect, and I should say to disengage is a better word, that programming and then rewrite the, rewrite the story. This is the thing. You have the power to do it if you get the support to do so. And I'm speaking from the point of view of being, um, having been through it, learn how to teach it, learn how to facilitate it, and learn how to help my clients. So it's something that I'm passionate about because most people don't talk about it, but we're all dealing with it. And it's kind of annoying sometimes to be the only one talking about it. Actually, it's not true. Other people are talking about it too. But in the dating coaching arena, most coaches aren't speaking about this. And so maybe I stand separate from that. So I've got to do the best I can to shout out this so you get to know this. So a couple of things I'll leave in the comments as links for you to check out. I will let you know you can reach out to me for a conversation if you want to find out how to work through your own stuff that's in the way from your past. As a complimentary chat with me, no problem at all. Well, it's no problem to me because I just talk about it and help you. Um, the problem may be you might decide to invest with me. That might be a problem. That would be a good, good choice. Um, anyway, interesting choice of words. So first of all, I'll put a link in the comments about that. I'm also going to put a link in the comments for my book because I mentioned that, of course. And also because... Yeah, this makes sense. Okay. Part of the wiring we have about dating is about you've got to keep going looking and looking out there for love. And oftentimes the I can is that when I get that, I'll feel better. When I have this, I'll feel better. When I meet that person, I'll feel better. That's a trap. And I've talked about this in deep, deep, great decent other talks, but I'm going to drop the reminder that my self-love practice will help you because a lot of us do not remember, and I've gone through this enough for myself to learn this, that it starts with loving yourself first. If you want to have an amazing relationship out there, that is healthy, that is fulfilling, that is really loving, love yourself first. Because by removing the need for them to make you feel okay, you won't be caught up in the trap of being needing them to make you feel okay. So I'll put the link in the comments for the self-love practice as well. So there's be three things in the comments for you to check out because frankly, all three of those will help you have what you want. I think I made some sense here. I hope you've got some clarity. I've got some interesting comments to come in, so I'll read those afterwards. I thank you for watching as always and if you have any questions, just put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. Where you can find my replays in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. As you've seen here, if you're watching live, this is my 5 p.m. Pacific time broadcast on my personal page every day of the week, seven days a week. And this is um, on my business, personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which you can certainly like my page, which is Barry Selby, the author. And also go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. All my social media is my name. And you can subscribe subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. 
Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wish. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. You can watch them there. And I hope this has made some sense to you. This is one of my many talks. Again, this is number 824. Plenty of conversations out there, content you can get help with. If you've watched all of those, it will change your life. <laughs> Frankly, if you watch this broadcast, it might change your life. So again, comments will be, links will be in the comments for you to reach out for support. Thank you, Steve. Nice to see you, my friend. Um, check them out. If you want to get some help, don't waste time avoiding it. Get the help you need to get where you want to go. I can help you with that, and uh, I'm here for you. Take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow with another topic, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.